Hey, Terry, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. How are you it's doing? Been a long today, time, it's been a long time since you and I met. We were roommates down in Guatemala fishing together, and uh, I'm glad we've stayed in touch. Yeah, me too. You know, we played some tag over the years, and uh, it's been it's been fun, you know, watching you. And I guess maybe you probably watch me and do it, see what see what I do though. But uh, um, you know, I started this new podcast of you know with all the crazy cool people in the world uh, that I know, and I travel a lot, and I think that there's a lot of things out there about travel that people find interesting. So, you know, in between the people I know and the people I meet, I, you know, I start this podcast. But you know, I, I ask everybody. What's the coolest, you know, what's the worst, the best, and the favorite, you know, part about travel or something you've done uh, that would help somebody else if they were thinking about doing it, going anywhere, doing something good? Where's a good place or where you been? I got to tell you, my favorite place in the whole world, if I have only one place to go, is Hawaii. The big island of Hawaii has got everything. It's got great fishing. It's got fantastic food. It's got, like, almost all the temperature zones that are known to the world. It's got the volcano. It's got uh, hot and got cold, safe. that's for sure. It's safe and it's America. So it's got all the infrastructure, you know, and the people are awesome. It's my favorite place. My dad, uh, when he left uh, mainland, went to live in Hawaii until he passed away a few years ago. And it's my home away from home out of everywhere I've been. I've been to pretty much almost every state in America. I've been to Europe, I've been to Asia, you know, I've been uh, to South and Central America and uh, in the Caribbean. And of all the places, Hawaii is, is my home away from home for a lot of different reasons. But uh, in terms of the worst, you know, it's always about the flights, man. Uh, you know, there's a lot of airlines uh, that aren't doing a great job these days. And, you know, I can't stand United. I try and avoid them like the plague. I, Americans gone down the toilet. Um, You're not biased, are you? <laughs> um, I, well, I fly a lot. And you know, a lot of people get stuck in these frequent flyer mileage programs. They're like a pair of golden handcuffs because they, they feel like they got to be loyal to an airline. Well, these, these, these airlines are not loyal to the people, man, because they're not taking care of business. They're not making sure that they're comfortable. They're, they're treating people like cattle. They call them passengers instead of customers, and they should call them customers and think about it that way. And the people that treat their, you know, their, 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 the people flying their airline as customers, JetBlue, Southwest um, and, and some of the other major carriers, but uh, American and United and, and dismally so, Delta is not doing so great these days either. But, um, but I, it, for me, it's about, uh, it's about comfort. It's about when you call, you get somebody in America um, that's answering the phone, not somebody that you know, doesn't know, you know uh, American flight patterns, you know, with no disrespect to people from you know, the Philippines or India. I mean, I'm half Indian. Right. Uh, but when I get an Indian guy trying to tell me about how to book my flight in America and where I want to go, I'm not so comfortable with that, man. And that's what I love about <laughs> JetBlue and I love about Southwest is I'm going to get somebody that's, that's, that's in America that's going to help me. And I always feel like I kind of win the lottery if I'm calling, you know, American or Delta or United to get a flight. And I get a person that's in the United States answering the phone. It's like the lottery because the rest oh, yeah, of the time, you, you hear a Southern accent. You're like, wow, I'm like, oh, thank cool. God. <laughs> you know, thank God. And I'm not biased against right. people from outside the United States, you know, getting jobs. And I think that's a great thing. But at the end of the day, you know, um, the people that you are in to the make United sure States, that you know what I'm, in America is going to happen. <laughs> they're going to know what I'm looking for, you know, but uh, exactly. yeah. So, uh, I don't know, man, I've been to some, I've been to some pretty dismal places too. <laughs> You know, yeah. uh, where's, where's, where's the worst place you've been? Damn. Worst place I've been. That's a, that's a difficult question. Cause I try to find something fantastic in every city that I go to. And I've been to a ton of cities, man. And What's the first thing will make it terrible. What's the first sign you know, you're not going to have a good time where there's some place you go. Awful first food. Sign. Awful food. Like if there's awful not food. good food that, that I like, you know, good seafood or good pasta, good Italian food or something that I can handle. And if it's all fried and if it's just greasy and just. So New like, Orleans is out. No, I love New Orleans. Well, wow, how you can go there, you know, that greasy fried food. Yeah, but, but no, but know what? <laughs> you know what? I go to Drago's in New Orleans as one example. Okay. The, right. fry, the, the, the barbecued oysters, they do on the barbecue with the, with the, with the, with the. Well, that's good. 
The barbecued oysters at Drago's, unbelievable. Okay. Yes, they're okay. unhealthy. So you're, you're, yes. so you're finding things are not fried in New Orleans. You're good. Yeah, I'm good. Well, I'm good if things are fried. Um, it's just in some places you can't get any alternatives, and that's all right. you're eating, and it's not good quality. I'll give you an example. I went to Panama last summer, and right. there were some fantastic places in Panama. But I went to this place called Boca, uh, which is like a, it's like a small um, area. I think it's almost like an island there. You've been to Boca? Yeah. Boca del Toro? Yeah. And um, I got to tell you, for being on the water, I remember going to a restaurant there, and maybe it was because it was off-season. It was like June or July. The fish that they brought out that was cooked was frozen. It was, an, it was awful. Like, I, you, and, they probably, and they probably got it from the United States uh, it, via it did China. It not taste fresh. Now, right? in all fairness, there were some places we went to where they were acquiring fresh fish and cooking it. But I got to tell I was a little disappointed in Bocas del Toro, Panama, because the, the food quality was not good. And it should have been because it's right on the ocean. And, and that's the thing that I understood about uh, one time in Panama for me, too. I was in Panama City and I'm looking at the menus and there's one, no tuna on it. OK, and then whatever fish was on it was like way overcooked. I'm like, you just would think that Panama would like be the seafood culinary capital, capital of, the, of the whole entire world. In all the yellowfin that I caught, have caught down there, all yep. the tunas and the and the yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yellowtail, uh, snapper. I've caught so many fish in Panama, lobsters, uh, in between the archipelagos of uh, Cunayala. There's no better place. It has more better, you know, just the ingredients. But as far as I'm saying, you're saying going out to a restaurant, nah, it wasn't. Uh, well, I, I I had some of my worst meals in Bocas del Toro. But I had some of my best meals in Panama City. There was a couple of just amazing restaurants that got it right. They had the fresh octopus. They did, you know, like they do when they, when they, when they do the octopus, all special. It was just like, it was tender. It was good. I did have one good chef there in Panama City. He's a guy that, he's sort of like the coffee baron down there. I can't, I'm trying to remember his yep. name, but I met him on a film shoot. And he's got a few restaurants there. And he uh, sort of ideal is uh, in, in Panamanian food. So the dishes that he makes is not like anything else uh, for the rest of the world. It's true Panamanian food. And that gets him the right to serve the Panamanian coffee that doesn't get out to too many unless you're, you know, a sultan or some sheik somewhere out there. Right, right. Like coffee strain that they have. So, you know, I got to meet him and eat some of his food. I, you know, it's not saying there's no good food in Panama. It's just the seafood. You think with just every place you go. Every place should be amazing. On the every place should be amazing, and it wasn't. You had to pick and choose, and especially in a seaside town like Bocas. We were literally in a restaurant on the water, and they brought this stuff out to me, and I'm like, you know, trying to tear it apart with my teeth, something, you know, some white fish that should have just, just crumbled into my mouth and just melted, right. you know? Made me think but, of like, oh, okay, when you send your crumble, I was thinking like, okay, buttered Corvina. Okay, this is going to be great. You know what it's going to be. Right. Um, so yeah, I guess we get Panama not a bad enough rap. I'll be hearing about it hopefully in my comment section just about how you guys are cleaning it up down there. You got good food. Sorry. <laughs> the next time we come fishing. But it was the so, it was some of the best, and it was one of the worst. It was yeah. it was like it was like bipolar, if you will. So like traveling for work, when you got to go investigate or listen to some cases or anything that you do, what what's like the go to travel food? Like you jump in a plane. What do you take with you? Do you take stuff in a bag with you, or, you, or do you have this way that you just shop in the airports after you get through? Okay, so I'm I'm super finicky about what flights I take. I'm checking out airplanes before I go. Like I book my own flights. I don't trust other people to do it unless they're going to book the ones that I've already selected. Because I'm looking for right. the size of the aircraft. I typically fly business anything over three hours, but I don't like to get gouged. So I'm shopping for the best deals on that. Of course. I'll use Expedia or whatever. I'll use Miles, but what, whatever. And so it's about getting a good, air, a good aircraft to get there. It's about then also only doing carry-on if I can. Right. Um, because it's I, just, never, I never check bags. Go direct I doing it. and carry-on so that if you end up having to switch flights, you got your bags and you can go. Um, you know, and, and every city I go to, and I often, you know, I go like New York or I've worked in Alaska. You know, I'm a forensic psychologist and I also do some work in the entertainment industry as a psychologist. Right. And so those two different worlds have taken me all over the United States, Canada, and some other places. 
And in it, you know, when you're gone, I try to make my time away as concentrated and as efficient as possible. But I also try to live my life. I don't like being gone and like being stuck in a hotel room. So I'll scope out ahead of time, you know, is there any fishing nearby? And that's why I got into fly fishing because you can pack your fly rods, you know, into a small, you know, three piece deal with a, right. with, with, with a bag. Yeah, you can, that throw, has you can throw in the car- yeah, overhead. Yeah. That's how I got into it. And man, I've not been disappointed. Like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, again, I'll try and scope out restaurants, but I'll also scope out fishing, Colorado. I love Colorado. Not only are the restaurants fantastic, but the fishing is incredible. The scenery, whenever I get a chance to work in Colorado, like I did this like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I was working in Colorado for like two days. I did right. two things there that were crazy. One, I, I booked a half day of guided fishing on my favorite river um, in the town of Bailey, uh, the Lower Platte River. I fished some private water there and got right. these amazingly large cut bows and cutthroat trout, rainbows, and massive, like five, six pounds. Oh, I'm just eating right there. With a, with a guy, catch and release, okay? And right. then I scoped out that I needed to get a new puppy, and they had um, this breeder that I'd found out about from fishing up in Alaska. They had this amazing white lab. He said, right. I said, where'd you get that dog? Colorado. So I had made contact with the guy, and believe it or not, they had a litter of puppies. It was coming up on eight weeks when I got there. So not only did I do my work there, which was with this one television show, but then I also got to go fishing. And then right. I brought back with me this beautiful white lab puppy that's now here. She's like, well, that's uh, a heck of a, that's a heck of a trip, man. Like, bring, tears. Yeah, I try. So that's the point. Bringing home when family I, members, making family I members. For the work, I try to like make sure that either I'm in and out or I'm getting things to do that, that make me feel like, Hey, this isn't just a wasted trip away where I'm just doing this for, you know, business. I'm like meeting people. I'm going fishing. I'm going to nice restaurants, New York, fantastic for restaurants. New Orleans, fantastic. Florida, the raw bars, amazing. Alaska, oh my God. Simon and Seifert's restaurant in Anchorage, Alaska. Have you been there? I haven't been to that one. It is. I've heard of it. Oh my God. It's in Anchorage and I'll stay at the Captain Cook Hotel, which is right downtown. It's this beautiful hotel that has got all teak wood in it and it's beautiful views of the, of the Cook Inlet. Reasonably priced, great breakfast. You can actually get a Dungeness crab omelet in the morning. Fresh crab in your omelet, delicious sausages. And then when you're done with your work day, because I've worked up there with, when I, I was doing some contract work. I was going to say, how many homicides do they have up there? <laughs> well, I've done some terrible homicides up there. Right. Like I had a couple of um, teen uh, perpetrated sexual homicides, horrible stuff. And I'd got, I had to go up there to evaluate those guys. Um, and while I was up there, I've been up, you know, I got licensed in Alaska. I'm still licensed in Alaska as a psychologist. And that's where I started, you know, combining, you know, uh, fishing and, and work. So, the, and the great thing is if you're up there during the summer, your right. work day might be from like, you know, eight to four, but it stays light to like 11, 12 at night. So boom, you I like those kind of days. Day to go up and go fishing, go get some food. Right. But, um, you know, no, I've, I've fished up there, the Kenai. I fished, um, I, I now uh, go there up for pleasure, like almost every summer to the Nishkak River, and I'll fly in on a float plane to, this, uh, to, to uh, Dave Egdorf's camp up there, stay for a week with my son, who's a teenager. He's been going since he was like nine or 10 with me on a four-seater float plane, land on the river, fish for a week, every single day going out on a, with a different guide. The only people you'll see are people from this camp because you're 100 miles from civilization. So what, what, what ends up happening is I find these pockets of places that I regularly travel to, right. restaurants I love, I'll go there repeatedly, I'll, I'll, I'll venture out a little here and there, but I try to do that in every city. When I went to like Ohio, I had to do presentation there, uh, and then I was doing some stuff with the FBI there as well. Guess what I found? Erie, Pennsylvania is 75 miles from Cleveland. Right. So you fly into Cleveland, I do my gig or whatever, or maybe I go to Chicago for a gig. I go, you know what, I'm going to stop in Ohio on my, on my way back and fish for a day in the tributaries coming out of Erie, Pence, out of Erie Lake in Erie, right. Pennsylvania. These mm-hmm. amazing steelhead trout. That's where I caught my first steelhead trout. I was on a work trip, right. took a rod with me. I'd researched um, that there's this gentleman there that was a guy. He was a former surgeon, went on to be, become a guy. Doc Wally's now deceased. I, I miss him. 
Right. But that's where I caught my first steelhead, these things coming out of the river. I caught 10 steelhead the first time I fished in, 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 in Walnut and the Elk coming out of uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. And that was a work trip, a work trip. So I come back, awesome, yeah. I've gotten to do this cool work that I do, you know, work, whether it's working a murder case or um, consulting with the FBI back in those days on, you know, keeping our country safe from spies and, and, uh, and terrorists and whatnot. And in the middle of well, it the all, phone's not ringing off the clock for you there's, now. There's a lot going on, but yeah, I'm super busy with murder cases these days. It's awful, right. but you know, I, I love doing it. It's exciting and it's a challenge to figure out, you know, the psychology of people do these terrible shootings like Vegas or, you know, other places, but in the midst of it all, you know, you have to live. Right. And if there's a message to the people that are watching your wonderful show, when I see the pictures of your show, Terry, <laughs> I'm like going, what beautiful places there are on this planet and the beautiful places are everywhere right and you just have to like research it like i was working in bend oregon uh last october i scoped it out online i saw that there's some good fishing up there the first thing i did was find the local fly shop so i get into town i get in my uber to go to this hotel where i'm staying i have them stop by the barnes and noble because i just published a book called evil thoughts wicked deeds right. uh, it's a true crime book and they had some copies there. So I went by to go sign them so that if anybody bought them up at the Bend, Oregon, Barnes and Noble, you know, they'd have one signed by me up in Bend. Right. And then I said, hey, uh, and the Uber driver's just sharing with me everything I wanted to know about this. And then we worked out that he would drop me, take me here, wait, take me this other spot. He was, Uber drivers are such amazing people. It's so, yeah, so I mean, they're people. really great. I always talk to my Uber drivers. It's like, sometimes you can find them, but there's sometimes it's like, they don't speak English and they, they've yeah. only been here for like five days. So yeah. it's like, but even then and, you can and can't get me where I'm wanting to go. Where they came from. So this guy takes me right. to the fly shop. I get in the fly shop and they, they set me up. I had my rod. I had my, I had my waiters with me, my carry on. Um, Got and, you rigged uh, up and gave you a guide and said, go. No guide this time. No he just guide. told me where to go on the river, the right. couple spots in the Fall River, and then I bought some flies there. He says, "Here's here's the flies you need," and then boom, I went and checked in, did my work, and then the next day I borrowed a car from a guy that I was working with, and we didn't start work until like two. Spent like three four hours in the river. I caught these massive, beautiful rainbow trout, like five nice. six pounders. Let them go. It was. I was like, like most people when they travel for work and do this stuff, man, they're, they, they go to breakfast and they go back to their hotel room. They're, they go to the business center and they get their laptops out and they're working all freaking yeah, day long. Hell no. Your, yours is just like fun. It's like, Hey, I'm going to get it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, do some, I do some, I do some, I do some work too, because, yeah. and then I'm, I, I, you, you got to stay healthy. Like there's this whole coronavirus thing right now. I think a lot of it, we have to be thoughtful. I agree, right. but there's a lot of hysteria. And as a psychologist, I'm taking a look at this and I'm going, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a shit ton of panic going on right now. That's really unnecessary. If you look at how many people have died and I'm not saying that that's that number. It's, it's, it's over 4,000 now. If we can stop one death through better health practices, let's do it. I well, believe course. that. Every life and counts. at the same time, what's the best health practice in the world was well, like three of them. One, if you're sick, don't go out there and infect everybody else. Right. Second, if you're going to cough or sneeze, do it in Cut your yourself. in your elbow, right? You know, and then Not your hands. yourself up. And three, wash your hands all the time. Keep right. your hands clean and don't feel like you got to shake people's hands. Fist pumps are it, fist pumps are in. Yeah, elbow. the whole fist pump thing is like came Trouble. up. It's all right, and it's a good strong nod. I think I heard a couple. It, it's of awesome. I mean, Howie Mandel has been doing that forever. Uh, well, Howie Mandel, yeah, he's a germaphobe to begin yeah, I mean, with. I, he doesn't I, want to know, touch I, I, I see Howie in one of the places that I work, and it's always been a fist pump. Those guys right. have been. He's been ahead of the curve forever. Yeah. But um, you know, I love Howie. But the other part of it is you got to keep yourself healthy, and even when I travel. Um, yeah. I always try to work out. I work out almost every day. I do yoga. I like taking those airborns. Like, I'll take an airborne before I get on the plane. Sometimes, I mean, it helps me with my sinuses. And yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I take vitamins. I change a, a whole demographics, or I'm flying from the East Coast to the West yeah. Coast. I'm affected by the pollen a lot. So I think I'll be, like, everybody. irritated. Yeah, I think people need to do what works for them. And, and right. uh, for me, I make sure I, I – in addition to scoping out if there's any fishing or where the good restaurants are – Where's the health club that I can get my workout in? 
and I try yeah. to keep my health habits intact. You belong to a member, like a nationwide membership. Even if you don't, like a lot of times the hotel will have. Yeah, they got one. day trips, right? Or there's like, um, or there's like good ones like Anytime Fitness is always one that's around. Golds. Right. Um, there's different chains, and then like Core Power Yoga is all over the United States. And so what do you think about all these gyms? I mean, when we look at this coronavirus all the way across the board, I'm not one to go to gyms. I'd rather cut wood and lift rocks, but that's just my nature. Me, I, I, I work out the, outside. You know what? I was in the gym today. I was in two yeah. gyms today. I was in. It, it doesn't bother you to think that touching other stuff and all that, and it's like okay. So, know, so so I went to one. Have. I went to one gym in Hawaii a while ago, 24 hour fitness. Mm. There was five people lined up to get on a machine. I walked out of that place because it disgusted me. Okay, right. it was just too many people. Well, that's, that's my point, yeah. And, but uh, if you go to like, you know, kind of a, a medium sized gym, you know, and they, they've got the, the sanitizers up and you're just washing your hand, you're not touching yourself. And there's, you know, there's a lot of healthy people that go, go to gyms. Right. I mean, they're, they're le leading healthy lifestyles. And I think that that bolsters your immunities against getting ill do i think that there's a a greater chance of because they got uh, like this three foot rule you know it's all this yeah, stuff they're showing on this on covid you know everything is terrible about asians and, and asian culture yeah, now it's, and it's just it's a it mess with any, that. It, it could be anybody wash your hands cover yeah. your mouth the stuff that we were told when we were little <laughs> yeah yeah it's a sensible but, thing sing but, happy birthday avoid, to I, yourself I would, I would avoid humongous crowds right now to be yeah. honest with you uh, i've like, never I'm been go big about going to malls festival. and movie theaters either one for like the mass things that happen yeah but then two i was always like you know I, i'm like howie on this i'm like don't just don't like touching a lot of stuff or yeah having people touch me and there's being a a, you know, personal speaker, people when you're out in crowds yeah. like that. I'm still like that when, when I go to do something or do yeah. demos. I'm very, very clean with what I do. It's not right. to pass stuff to them. Right. I think about, right. hey, I could have got something. I'm just as guilty as they are, <laughs> me being afraid. Yep. I, I'm just as easy making them sick with something it, that I've caught, but I'm good with. It's consideration. You know, right. it's, like, it's consideration. I, mean, I was at a, a meeting about, like a, a meeting with kids, uh, parents from my son's school like about a month ago and this is when the coronavirus was starting and I'm you know we're in Pasadena California we just had our first case identified like a couple days ago it's, it had actually mm -hmm. been identified before that um, and the person was close to somebody that had it so they immediately put that person in quarantine so it wasn't like they were out in the community they've known right. about it they immediately were on lockdown you know and so forth and everybody you know whatever is 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 practicing pretty good health practices in, in my area. But I was in this meeting and the woman behind me coughed and I could feel the droplets hitting the back of my neck. And I'm just like, right. what are you doing? Like, not right. only is that not good right now in this day and age with what's happening immediately, but that's just rude. And so I'm just kind of like, you know, people got to get back to basics. Um, don't panic, but have your health stuff in order. Um, Take care of yourself, get sleep, eat well, exercise, um, and wash your hands a lot and avoid situations where there's a heavy degree of exposure. And I think those common sense things and then getting information from good sources, the, you know, the CDC and who, I mean, I think wow. that's part of it. Like it, knowledge is power. And the more you know, and there's some things you know you can do to keep yourself safe, I think that that goes against. Well, it's like, I'm trying to understand again, you know, being, being you're the psychologist here, this toilet paper. Oh my God. Run. I mean, what is this? You know, I, I see, I see social media. I see a lady making, you know, a jest about it, packing ammunition into a bag saying, yep, I'm ready for the zombie apocalypse. And then you see another one. It's like, well, I can't get pasta in Italy. Some old man, he's like, why can't I get no pasta? I mean, people are get this sick, they get sick, but now I can't eat. I can't even have pasta. Yeah. So all around the world, I'm watching things, toilet paper runs, like it's the end of the world <laughs> for toilet paper. Other people are packing ammunition and, and then a the guy can't, poor old man can't get no pasta to eat for dinner. And so when I look at it, I just sit back and I'm like, what in the hell is yeah. going on? I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of frightened people 
um, you know, the, the lack of information or inconsistent information. You think too um, much information from the media? Because, I mean, that's then, the way I'm then, feeling really and then hard. Over focusing on, you know, certain issues can actually, mm -hmm. you know, counter, you know, have the counter effect. So I think there is a bit of, we're in a different world now. We got social media galore. We got uh, all this media stuff that's, that's kind of fanning, you know, concern maybe beyond. Just like, just like this show. I mean, yeah. it's no different. I mean, for me, it's like to have peace with it. Like, all right, if you do get it, you know, you know, get to the doctor, take care of it. Don't, don't, you know, like we said, don't go out and give it to someone else. Hey, if your family wants to come over and help you, please tell them no. Uh, you know, but be, be secure, be safe. Yeah. Uh, the so possibility I, of you getting it or me getting it tomorrow is just as likely. Well, you, so, you look at how many cases do we have in America? You divide that by five hundred you know, million, three hundred and thirty-one million people. Right, right. I mean, you, you know, and and of course the concern is about it is is how it spreads, and that makes right. sense. But again, the amount of attention that's being placed upon it, I think, has magnified a sense of panic in America, and I think people need to settle down, get back to basics. And uh, we'll get through this. This too yeah, shall I pass. Mean, you're shutting this, down sports games and people's yeah. lives. I saw where they're taking and giving payroll tax back to specific yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, industry that can't stay at home from work to do things. Like yeah. the restaurant industry on a whole. That's just like double whammy. Waiters are not working. Chefs are not working. Uh, restaurant owners are, are going to go defunct with this because nobody wants to go out to eat. Well, I've been going out to eat. Fast food too. <laughs> I'm going out to eat. I went, I went out to a restaurant. Yesterday, I'm going out to one now for lunch as soon as we're finished. I'm going to have me some sushi, right. but it's like... Yeah, I saw an article. It's like, okay, you'd rather be in a restaurant because they do have health standards and they do wash their hands. Well, or, or at least told to as much as we know. Right, right. Uh, again and again in, in, in its environment versus the gym or versus a bus station. Yeah, or but here's, here's my message, Terry. Yeah. My message is stick to the basics, get information, and this too shall pass. It right. will. It, it will. will. Mark Cuban said it, so it's got to be true, man. Them guys in Shark Tank, they're pretty sharp. <laughs> if he's but, saying you know, it's going to be well, okay, and he's buying up Twitter. As a psychologist, I marvel. Last night, I went to Target, and I couldn't believe when I saw these empty shelves. I'm like, people are out of their mind. And I should know, you know, it makes sense, Dr. Mohandi, that, it, that this happens because right. people are scared <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. But as a human being, I'm going, what the fuck? You know, like, exactly. seriously, what the fuck? You know, right. you really think more toilet paper is going to help you? I mean, that's why I said you know, my, my friends couldn't understand what it. it was about. And I said, you get the shits when, with the flu? No, you, you get a fever, you get sick, but it doesn't. Why, what's with the toilet paper? I, I think the fear is, is that, is that everything's going to be hard to get and that people aren't going to be allowed to leave their houses and people want simple comforts. Maybe of that's course. part of it. Toilet paper is probably, yeah. I guess, you know, if you're dying days, I mean, in all the places that I've been in the desperate situations, toilet paper has never been the thing that's like said, hey, if I got to be stuck here for a while, yeah, I will not be able to live without it. Do you go, you go in the ocean, take a bath, you go through there, you go to the bathroom, it's like, just totally. like a fish, man. Totally. Cool, I'm good. <laughs> so totally. the, the whole toilet paper thing, though, it's like I say, if you take away some things from people, and like with this show being travel, about travel and everything we're talking about now is like hell just going to the store is travel okay so when i look at the way that people are reacting in all different lines of personal service um but then we talk about the whole toilet paper and creature comforts of that because businesses are just staying home or closing and sending everybody home it's wild to me to think about the whole world comes to a stop truck drivers are not driving the train's not yeah. running at some point, at some it's point, all, it's it like just, as bad as a meteor hitting the earth. It's yeah, like, yeah, it is. Wow. It, at some point, the madness surrounding this will have to stop and they'll have to rein it back because, you know, the show must go on. You know, on a scale of like one to 100 as a psychologist, what do you, where do you think we are as a world right now? And, what, and just what you see from the media, or do you I think, think it's I, more media hype that it's really not that bad? I, I think that. There's a need to prepare for it, right. but that they're treating it in ways that is creating panic and hysteria. And I think that, you know, a measured, thoughtful response 
uh, needs to be reinforced by our leaders and by not just the leaders that we've elected, but you know, our community leaders, our right. natural leaders, our parents, our, our clergy, you know, the, our bosses, you know, local health departments. And because the ripple of the, the economic ripple effect is, is going to launch us into recession. That's what I'm worried about. I've well, well, heard we're already there. We may already be there. We're going zero negative interest. Yeah. From what I hear now. And yeah, so banks are going to be paying people to take loans out. Yeah. So the, the ripple effect from hysteria is to create, you know, what you see in Wall Street, what you see, uh, you know, with people canceling things. And certain things do need to cancel to, to prevent the movement of, you know, the illness from country to country. And of course, those things make sense from a public health management standpoint. But at some point, cooler heads will need to prevail and take a yeah. look and say, what, what, what is the thoughtful thing that we need to do? And what is stuff that we're doing that just doesn't make any sense? Um, and, and also figure out new ways of deriving um, income. Uh, mm -hmm. during these kinds of times. I worry about people losing their jobs and their income. I, th I think I that this it. will be an experience like that because from what I see just in media, just in new, these young influencers making 200 grand a year, I'm like, it's amazing the generations of, of what jobs are and what they aren't anymore. So like with this whole thing going on, it's bad, but at the same time, there's actually good too because the workforce develops and shifts and change. It makes it hard for all the financial guys out there to say, yeah. okay, well, how do we put our thumb on this and, and, and keep people and investors calm? That's the hardest part of everything because what's normal is what we're doing right now from the, our, you and my parents. This is like, okay, it's the blue chip machine. This was what makes the world work. Now you take that away and it's just tech and young kids with phones and, and apps and there's a whole rest of the baby boomer gen x gen z left behind is still is not there yeah so I, you're gonna see a i think we'll see a great division with what you say and people staying home worldwide you're gonna have to find a new way to make money but i'm going to i'm gonna keep traveling like i got gigs yeah, coming I, up in the united states i'm going to I'm, I'm hopefully going to miami next week for some work and while i'm there i'm hoping i'm going to go to some nice restaurants i'm hoping to maybe oh, go check out there. the check out the beach, get a little ocean time in. Um, and then the week after that, I'm supposed to go to New York and uh, Manhattan. I'm maybe uh, doing some work there and maybe doing another appearance on so the doctor. are you doing a lot of just acting or is it mixed in between being a doctor and, and the acting part? Well, it's not acting. It's, it's well, um, not acting, but like, I I'm guess doing appearance. I'm yourself doing, I'll, on I'll be doing Like in New York, I'm doing, uh, I'm hopefully doing another appearance on the Dr. Oz show. Um, yeah. We tentatively scheduled that. The other stuff is some behind the scenes, um, consultation I do on some television shows and hopefully that moves forward. Uh, that'll be good. Um, I've got, um, uh, you know, a trip to, um, a, a big conference in Orlando, uh, in May, the crime con, I'm doing a couple yeah. presentations there. I hope that moves they take, forward. They take all this. They keep all the super capes on at that show too. I don't know about all that. <laughs> no, no, that's not, that's not Comic-Con, it's crime. I know that, yeah, that was but, uh, but I love how Comic-Con happened and now everything's called a con. There, so there are fun. some superheroes there that, that are going to be there, yeah. though. People well, yeah, have, you got yourself there. No, not me. Some, some super, people, super fly fisherman in Mahindi. <laughs> but no, it's uh, interesting times. We'll get through it. Um, and I'm going to keep looking at travel opportunities. I'm going to keep going to tropical places. I might even do an Alaska trip this summer because that's one of my favorite. My favorite places to travel in the world. I'm going to give them to you. My Is top okay, three or four or five. Hawaii. Right. Alaska. Right. Um, I freaking love Guatemala where you and I met. It's oh, so Guatemala is amazing. Yeah, it, the the fishing is fantastic. The food is amazing. The people are wonderful. It's beautiful. Um, I, love, uh, I love New York. Um, New York's wonderful. I, I, I love New York. I love, um, and I love, I love Italy. And I feel bad for it, Italy right now. They'll get through it, and I'll go back. Uh, because they're, they're, no, they seem like the hardest hit. They have over a thousand dead now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a while till it's safe to go there, but I, I, I will be back to Italy. Right. Um. So I have somebody that's arriving at my house right now. Hold on. Okay. Let, me, let him in. Give me one second. All right. Sorry about that, Terry. Oh, that's okay. No worries. I got just a, a minute or two more. Is oh, that's okay. No, it's just great to have you on. Like I say, like with everything that uh, 
is cool in the world, you know, being able to share travel experiences with people. Cause I, I know with everybody I talk to, it may not sound like you get anything out of it, but if you listen to the show of the places or the, the best places to eat, that's what it's about for me with everybody I have on the show. All right. I'm going uh, to give, give you my top list of places to eat in America. Cause every okay. city I go to, I come up with Chicago's a Chicago is my number one hands down. Chicago is just okay. every day I'm, of the rest I'm of your you whole specific, entire life. Specific places. Okay. Specific. My favorite restaurant in the whole of the United States is in Boston. Okay. It's the daily catch on Hanover street. Daily catch. I know that one. That's they a good place. You linguine with clams and the white sauce right in the skillet massive right. chunks of garlic and, and clams in the skillet at this table yeah, you got the chopped humbling. clams in there yeah been going there for 30 35 years in 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 new orleans drago's for the barbecued oysters in yeah. the hilton riverside hotel there uh R hilton riverside hilton river walk gotcha um in no new york take your pick you know California. i like il molino's yeah. Italian. That place now, is phenomenal. California would probably be in, in Southern California. There's uh, some great sushi bars. There's Osawa. There's Boa Steakhouse in West Hollywood. And then Pink. Yeah, which one, which is the best one in, in West Hollywood? Like I know there's Pinkies Boa. and I get my hot Boa. dog. Boa. Boca, it's called there no, in West B Hollywood? B-O-A, Boa. Oh, Boa. Boa. Oh, like, the, like a snake. I gotcha. And then uh, let me think. In Hawaii... Oh my God, um, Alan Wong's. Alan Wong's, yes, no, no mistake, that's good. Or the shrimp trucks, um, the uh, the one with the Italian name. What what is that? You know which one I'm talking about on the north. I'm not shore. sure. Oh, I, I, that's that's sort of new for me. I, I don't. Do, you know, I haven't been to Hawaii do, in a bit. You got to do the shrimp truck, Terry. It's amazing. Um, and then of course Roy's. You can't go wrong with in well, Hawaii. Roy's, Roy's Roy. You know. Yeah. I got you. Always got to the spam with mainland, them. Mainland now they have. Um, they have been bought out by a corporation, but the ones in, right. the, in the islands are still owned by Roy himself. Right, right. But that's all I got, man. I, I got to run. All right. Well, you do your thing, man. Thanks a lot for, uh, you know, being a guest on the show. And I'm sure I'm going to see you around sooner than later. I and, hope sooner. Uh, for everybody out there in the world, the Extreme Passport, man, this is what it's like to travel as a global local. When you work and you do that, and, you know, some of you sit in a job, you know, in a cubicle for like two years and say, hey, I'm going to the Cayman Islands. But hopefully some of these different shows that you come across will, you know, open it up and say, yeah, well, I was thinking about going someplace. That's the place I want to go. So hopefully you enjoy the show. And uh, until next time, cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Terry. Take care. Thank you.